you have to kind of not a prime pooping zip position. No. <laughs> so this one's well planned out. Yeah. <laughs> we do definitely need a platform. <laughs> Get her. Hey everyone. Hello. Welcome to the first episode of our Bigfoot truck camper renovation series. In our last episode, we traveled across Canada to pick up our new to us Bigfoot 2500 series uh, truck camper. We love the truck camper, um, but it's old and it's in need of a little bit of a makeover. Yeah, regular maintenance and kind of make it the way we want it to be. Exactly. It uh, currently isn't set up to do any off-grid camping. So that's going to be one of our bigger renovations and just, you know, put our little personal touch on it. So today we are going to give you a pre-renovation tour and discuss with you um, some of our plans, design ideas and whatnot. So come along with us. Come and, and check it out. So <laughs> this camper is a 1997 Bigfoot 2500 series built in our 10 foot 6 2500 series built in british columbia canada back in the day with it we got a bunch of um information all kinds of manuals yeah we actually have the original build sheet so it's pretty a pretty basic order it's got electric jacks and uh didn't get factory ac which we're good with because we didn't want the extra height um, we got in the in the mix of everything that we got we got the original brochure from when they wanted to order it so this here shows everything about this particular camper and so it's got the exclusive winter wall system so it's a four season camper but I got a couple of little upgrades as well so we got a fantastic fan and a bifold range cover uh, electronic ignition hot water heater we got the outside shower um the optic rear vision door which just means that our door um, a window has, a, has, a, yeah. has a lower window and then it we do have an awning on the outside a self-storing awning comes with an am fm cassette player and electric jacks and so here gives you all the specs overall length, height, width, and whatnot. So our weight is 2,450 pounds. It looks here like, I'm not sure if this is options or or water. Um, I think that's the standard option package because it shows 150 oh, pounds right. here. So we're so about 2,600 2, pounds 600 and that's pounds. dry though. You gotta add water and all your stuff on top of that. So we'll, uh, we'll probably be um, well, well over 3,000 pounds. Welcome to the bedroom. So up here, um, this whole section is gonna get um, a pretty big makeover. Um, we are going to start, well, let's start from the top and we'll work our way down. So up here in this skylight, it looks like at some point we had a leak. Um, there's minimal damage here to the wood. It doesn't seem to have spread out anywhere out here. There's no staining or anything. So we're pretty confident that the little bit of leakage that we did have pretty much stayed to this frame. So we'll be replacing all of this wood, checking everything out, fixing this up up here. Gord will get up on the roof. It looks like the roof is original and probably has never been um, resealed. So Gord will climb his way way up to the top and uh, make sure everything is uh, good and tight up there. And uh, we'll move on to the walls. The walls up here, we do have a little bit of water damage. I'll take the camera from Gordon. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So up here, it's not water leakage from the roof. It just appears to be condensation from over the years. So we have it around some of the windows where it is just made the paper pull away. That's all going to change. So it'll all get new wallpaper back here. And then something a little bit funky 
back here for a headboard on all these really sexy early 90s valances are gonna come off all the way around as well as all the purple curtains that you see everywhere. <laughs> These will all uh, come off as well. The curtains that I'm gonna do up here as well as throughout the entire RV are gonna be really similar to what we did in the Duchess. Those curtains were um, room darkening as well as insulated, so it really helped control the heat. So if it was cold outside, it kept it warmer in here. If it was hot outside, it helped keep it cooler. And then they'll roll exactly like they did in the Duchess because they worked really, really well for us. And we were also able to put them at different levels as well. So that's what's gonna happen here. And then the mattress. So as you can see, even the mattress is purple. <laughs> this is the original mattress and it's coil. And it's really uncomfortable. It's okay when you first lay down, but then after about an hour, you just, yeah, it, it doesn't work. So we're gonna get um, same mattress that we had in the Duchess, which is um, a Zenith Green Tea Cooling Memory Foam Mattress, which was just awesome. We have a 12 inch in the Duchess. And we're not gonna go anywhere near that big. We're, we figure we're gonna do an eight inch um, one of those in here. So that'll be a great upgrade as well as get some of the airflow mats underneath. Right now, there's nothing underneath here for airflow. So we'll be getting some airflow mat. We haven't quite decided what we're gonna get yet. We have a couple of ideas, um, but we'll let you know about that in a future video. Oh, and then up here also, we've got some great storage. So on either side of the bed, we have these really deep cubbies. So that's gonna be great. In the Duchess, we only had a couple of um, overhead compartments that it was pretty tight for all of our clothes. And then on each side, we also have these and I'll show you inside of them. And they go way back and they actually go down quite a ways. So they're exactly the same on either side. So that's gonna be really great as well. And then our TV. We are on this, so it's a little wonky up here. On, on this side of the uh, camper, it has the plug-in, but the wall isn't very wide. So we're gonna mount it on this side of the bed and Gord is gonna use his magic and he is going to um, install a new plug-in from behind the fridge onto this wall and maybe some USB ports and whatnot as well. And we'll put our TV here because it is a much bigger wall and then it can swing out so that we can watch it from the dinette or from bed and then one little thing i forgot was our reading lights so even though they're pretty retro they work pretty slick and they still work and they swivel and whatnot so i think we're gonna leave them and i'm probably just going to um to paint them up with some of that is that krylon plastic paint and uh, just give them a little bit of a facelift. And that's uh, pretty much it from up here. Not a whole lot is going to change here in the dinette area. Um, we're keeping the cushions the same way. There's like nowhere on these cushions whatsoever. They're in really great shape. Um, and even though the table and the countertop in here is purple, <laughs> we're, we're going to embrace it because again, there's nothing wrong with this table. It's perfect. So um, we're just gonna try and work with it, bring some colors in that, that complement it. So same thing as up top. These really sexy valances are coming down. There is mini blinds back in here. Um, I don't want those. They're like the old metal ones, really hard to clean and kind of gunky. So it's going to be the same uh, insulated room darkening curtains that are going to come on here. And um, there is one plug-in in here. There's one here and there's one over in the kitchen area. That's it. So Mr. Jones has a task to try and figure out where to put at least another one of these because we don't have any. So... We'll be adding some plugins, maybe some USB over here in this area as well. Um, the lights, there's lots of them in here, but they're really 
junky. They don't, they don't work very well. So we are going to put some new lighting in. We haven't quite decided yet what the uh, lighting is going to be. Um, all we know it's going to be better and it is going, they're going to be on a dimmer for sure. We put some really nice pot lights and uh, surface mount lights in the Duchess. They were really bright LEDs. So we were wishing that we had a uh, dimmer switch for those. So there will be dimmers in here. This wall here at some point in time did um, require a little bit of repairs. This window leaked. So this wall has been repaired, but it's never been um, upgraded to match. It's just still the, the raw paneling. So this wall is going to receive some new wallpaper, but the other ones around um, are going to stay um, as is because they're in really great shape. The fridge in this thing is a Dometic Royale, which I don't know if that's the original fridge or not. I have like in, we have all the original paperwork that came with this RV or camper and um, there's two different fridge manuals in there. So I don't know if it actually, the original one failed and they put another one in or what it is, but I'm suspecting maybe. But anyway, it's, this is a three-way fridge, propane, 12 volt and 120 volt. Um, on the 12 volt setting, it uses a ton of power and uh, you have to switch back and forth. If you want to run on 12 volt while you're driving the truck and it's charging the batteries, you can run on 12 volt. Then you got to switch it back to propane or you'll drain your batteries. So it's kind of a little bit more complex than what we had in the Duchess because in the Duchess we just put in a DC fridge and it just ran off the batteries all the time. It was super efficient. It cooled really well, way better than these because that's a compressor fridge when it's on 12 volt and this is a uh, absorption fridge I believe it's called or something but not very efficient and just in the four or five days that we traveled in this thing come bringing it back from BC the fridge temperatures just seem to be all over the place and it never really seemed to run really that well. It seems like a big fridge. When you look inside, it um, it's not really all that big. It's not very deep. So really not near as much space as, um, as we had in the other fridge. Um, the other fridge was a nine cubic foot. It's a little bit taller in the Duchess, but um, I think it's actually maybe a little bit narrower. So really space isn't that efficient in here. So we can't fit a nine cubic foot, but we can maybe fit a six or a seven, but um, we have to look into that. I'll have to take this fridge out, measure the cavity, see if we can extend it and get the biggest fridge in there that we can that'll run solely off of DC because it's just way better in so many aspects. Over here also, we have the uh, existing solar system that the previous owner installed. This is the... Um, the battery monitor, maybe the charge controller too. I don't know, I haven't really looked that much into it, but it's old. We've come a long way with solar stuff since then. And um, I have to measure the area on the roof. I'm gonna try and get as much solar panels as I can. Hopefully we can get around a thousand watts or something like that, but the roof's limited for space. Um, so we'll see what we can get up there. And, um, put in a new inverter, new charge controller, um, get a DC to DC so the truck can charge the batteries really fast. And right now there's two um, lead acid deep cycles in the battery compartment out there, which I'm gonna put in the, um, the uh, lithium batteries that we had in the Duchess, um, since I'll just transfer them back and forth. So we have 400 amp hours, four 100 amp hour batteries that I think will fit in the battery compartment in this. It's going to be really tight just with my quick measurements. I think they'll fit, but I'll actually have to try and fit them in there to uh, see. And um, if not, I may need to stash batteries elsewhere and I still got to figure out where inverter is going to go and all that stuff. And uh, we're pretty limited with space, but uh, we'll get it all in here somewhere. So here in the kitchen, um, we're not really changing a lot. We're just going to Give it a little bit of a facelift. We're gonna keep the countertops, the purple countertops, but we're gonna keep them because again, they're in really good shape. Our stove is great, little oven. We actually use our oven. In the Duchess, we did. And we did learn that to stop things from burning, put a pizza stone in underneath your, uh, your trays 
distributes the heat a little bit better. Um, the top, the top needs a little love. It's uh, been scratched up pretty good. Actually kind of looks like somebody stepped on it at some point in time, but uh, not sure what happened there, but we're gonna try and do our best to give that a little bit of a facelift. But three burner propane, we really like propane. We have uh, really no interest in going to induction. We actually got a little portable induction uh, cooktop when we were renovating our kitchen in our house. And we don't love it. We'd rather have propane. We actually have propane in our house as well. So we're sticking with this stove. Um, everything here seems to work well. This is where all our gauges are. And um, water pump, monitor system, everything seems to work our hood light and our fan. So that all works great. So that's gonna stay in as well. I'm gonna do some tiles all the way around just to cover up some of this wallpaper, make it a little bit more washable. And again, here around the windows, we have the same condensation problem where it's peeling um, the wallpaper. So just like in the Duchess, uh, where we removed all the windows during renovation and resealed them all, we're gonna be doing the same thing on here. We're gonna take them all out, replace all the butyl tape because they're old and they've never been uh, redone. So they're all gonna get some love so that we don't have this condensation leaky problem um, again moving forward. Same thing with removing the um, mini blinds from here. They'll get the roll up curtains as well. Uh, even though we are over 12 feet in the air, <laughs> And nobody can see in our windows is still going to get curtains on there just to help with the heat, heating and the cooling. Um, and then our sink, we're back to that little tiny shallow sink um, that we pulled out in the Duchess um, because I did, well, we didn't like the placement with them in the Duchess. Here I don't mind the placement and we went deeper. Um, we did like, I think a 10 inch, nine or 10 inch sink over in the Duchess. And we, when we wash our dishes, we don't fill our sink full of water. We kind of do the soaping and the rinsing and, and whatnot. So we're gonna leave this sink. Um, it's gonna help us make sure that we can serve as much water as we can. Um, even though we've got way more water in here than we did in the Duchess. In the Duchess, we only had 19 gallons of water. And in here, we have 50 gallons of fresh water. We were able to actually go pretty much a week on that with each showering a couple of times a week and doing our dishes and stuff. We don't drink that water. We um, got like the big blue water bottles and we had a separate pump system for that. Uh, in here, I think our goal is to drink the water. So we'll probably be installing a filter system in here somewhere when we figure out where. Um, but yeah, so anyway, this is staying. Uh, we will replace them, the taps from these old RV taps to something newer, probably like a residential type faucet. Um, and again, the lighting, uh, where is it? Right here. This is the plug-in for the kitchen, the plug-in for the kitchen. So it's the second one in here. So I don't know. We're not really bringing much in the way of appliances with us. So this might do for over here. Um, there is some cupboard space, not a lot of cupboard space. They've got one really big drawer here. We have a big pot drawer underneath the stove down here. So that's really great. And then in here, it's, it's shallow, but maybe down in here somewhere is where the filter system is going to go. I'm thinking maybe like in here, but we're, we're not hundred percent sure. So, so there's that one. And then there's one here, which goes on top of another box. I don't have much room here either. And then there's plumbing. So this is where I get the dilemma of where do I keep the garbage can? Because there's nowhere to put one. Um, in here right now, this, it's, it's a little backwards. So this right now is the pantry system. So it's got all the shelving in here. So we're gonna swap this out. This is actually gonna become um, for our coats and our shoes over here. And on the other side over here, this one here is gonna become the pantry, which is right now the closet. So it's between the stove and the fridge. So this one's gonna become pantry. 
And then this really cool little thing. So we looked at this first and we were like, what is this for? It's to roll out your kettle so it's then you can make tea. <laughs> it's fancy. It's, it's fancy. It, that's, it, that's what we use it for, but that's not what it's for. So we looked at this and we were like, I don't know what this is for. I don't get it. And then we saw coax cable in here and we're like could that have been for a tv and then we found the original brochure for the unit and that's exactly what it is it's one of the old bubble butt tvs and there's a plug-in in there used to oh there's a plug-in it's a good air fryer closet yeah so i'm thinking this is going to be a great appliance um cupboard for like your toaster and your air fryer and coffee pots and all that kind of good stuff um and then i guess we may as well go down to the floor the flooring right now has just pieces of carpet put in it. I'm going to pull this up. I apologize for what we might see underneath it because I haven't pulled it up yet. But oh, it's really dirty. It's pretty retro. Nice, it's right? pretty retro. I think I had this in my kitchen back in the uh, like early 90s. <laughs> That's the time frames, right? <laughs> but anyway, all this flooring is goes into the bathroom and down in here. We're going to pull that all out. I think we might leave um, the carpet that's underneath the table just for added warmth when you're sitting there. There is um, storage under there. There is a too. hidey hole, mm. yeah, underneath there. And then, and, basement and this here goes into the basement, so which is awesome. So it goes like all the way back to underneath the door. So I think we're going to put some sort of a pull-out tray in there of some sort with a divider that we can get to this side of it from inside the camper and then the other from the outside, the other end of it from the outside of the camper. So yeah, so all the way through here and then into the bathroom, it's going to get all new floor. So in the bathroom, we'll have to do quite a few changes. If you uh, have a look in here, it's pretty tight. The toilet is in the corner kind of in a funky position with the sink in the other corner and um door here if it's closed there's nothing to even hang on to <laughs> can you get down there you, you gotta need get a way down with this little wee toilet uh, it's like you're in a dollhouse bathroom or something but anyway i guess it's decent for a truck camper i suppose but it's uh it's a little on the low side and this sink is just completely in the way. You have to kind of not a prime pooping zip position. No, and yeah. you cannot put the lid all the way up. Oh. <laughs> and imagine you have your towels, your nice clean oh, yeah. towels hanging here. Yeah. And then your lid goes up and actually hits it, the sink. It, yeah, it can't go up. And then your towels are there and it limits your this coming back and this doesn't even go up all the way and it's kind of wedging against your towel and yeah. <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> Not good. We did learn in the Duchess that with all the research we did before that, we see lots of people talking about these composting toilets and we were kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like that. And then we traveled with the regular toilet with the black tank and we had, you know, we only had 19 gallons of fresh water. So we had to go somewhere every four or five days to fill up our water tank. So then we had to find a place to dump to, which usually you could find them together. But um, now that we're carrying 50 gallons of fresh water, we don't need to go somewhere every, you know, four or five days to, to fill up our water. So really we don't want to have to dump our tank either, our toilet tank. And um, then you got to find a place to dump your toilet tank all the time. It's easier to find a place to fill with water. So if we can eliminate that completely, that would be good. So we're kind of going down the compost toilet road. We're since we are going to try and make the space more spaceful. Is that <laughs> spacious? a word? Spacious. Spacious. <laughs> I kind of like spaceful. Spaceful. <laughs> um, the sink's got to go. Yeah. There's just no room for it. The kitchen sink is right there. I can touch them both at the same time. Watch. So why have a sink here really? Um, I think we're going to take it right out. We're going to put in a compost toilet. Maybe I'll make one myself. I don't know. So we can custom fit it in there. And um, we'll do the urine diverter into the black tank. Use a black tank just for urine. And uh, then we can go a really long time without dumping our tank. The shower is pretty good. 
You can even stand in there. I can stand in here. There is a oh, there's, case of there's water, case in, of here. water in there. Yeah, so I can even stand in the shower. I'm six feet tall and I got an inch to spare. Um, this sort of the same deal we had in the Duchess though, the shower curtain, it tries to saran wrap you. Uh, it's awful. And so that's got to go. We'll, uh, in the Duchess, we put a, uh, rod that came out to hold our curtain out. So I don't know, maybe we can do something similar here. We can figure that out. Maybe a better, um, power head, power head because the on off on this one is really hard to operate kind of. So something with a push button maybe. And, uh, I think that's it. Oh, well, then we're going to redo kind of the walls. Treatment with the walls yeah, and, and the curtains, curtains and stuff, freshen everything up. Maybe a new fan because this one's kind of the old school, cheesy little one. And, uh, and we do keep referencing what we did in the Duchess. Um, we did do all our renovation videos and, and walk through on the Duchess. So go back and look at those videos when we reference stuff and you can see what we did there. So as far as the outside goes, as Marianne was saying on the inside, we're going to pull all the windows out, reseal them all to make sure they're sealed well still, uh, because it's, what did I say? 37 years old. It's old. That's how it is. They like old things. Something like that. <laughs> so she's old. And, um... I'm going to build some sort of um, storage boxes in this area here because the camper needs to be spaced up about 10 inches to clear the cab to get it to sit right in there. So I'm going to build boxes in here. Um, I originally was going to support them out of the box of the truck with a structure and everything, but now I think I'm going to mount them right to the camper. And um, usually I kind of make up things as I go. This time I actually did a bunch of planning and I, uh, I have a bunch of uh, blueprints. So here's what I've come up with. <laughs> so this one's well planned out. You can see the boxes in there. Uh, lots of solar on the roof and uh, a hitch on the back and a spare tire I'm thinking maybe fitted under there. And uh, extra fuel and storage in the bed spacer. So that's kind of the plan there. there. There's our blueprints we're going to go by. So we'll oh. see how close we can get to that. You forgot bigger tires. Well, those are the bigger tires. Oh. Can't you tell? <laughs> Look how close they are to the fenders. See the space in this one? Yeah. It's all to scale. <laughs> so we'll see when I'm done. I'll bring this out again and see if it looks the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. So as uh, we were saying, inside um, the... Uh, Auxiliary shower that was added as an option from factory when it was new is right there. That's all still good and it still works. We have our usual RV stuff, um, the furnace at the front, the water heater, the 120 volt plug in, shore power, and uh, the water inlet for um, filling the tank and uh, hooking up to um, campground water or whatever you call it, it's town water, city water. This is the uh, the wet bay, they would call it, I guess, because this is a three season or four season, I guess, model. It sends heat down in the basement, so your uh, valves for your black water tank, gray water tank and stuff are all in this closed in compartment that's somewhat heated. At the back, um, definitely we're going to have to bring a ladder with us because to get at anything, I can't reach any compartments from the ground really. Um, we have our old janky stairs that came with the camper here, which really there's a whole bunch of geometry going on there, but I can't really seem to make it work. So the stairs, the previous owner put these spacers on to try and make them level, but they don't seem to be any good. I think we're going to do a platform that slides out on the back here for a rear deck. And then we can have our stairs coming off the side because we plan on towing a vehicle behind on a hitch extension. So, um, in my mind, this is going to roll out and then we'll have probably an expanding stair or maybe even a, a rigid stair that we could take down. Um, but I still would like to leave room for a spare tire to sit on the hitch extension in here. Cause really there's no other place to put a spare tire. And that's going to be a, a 42 inch, 12 and a half inch wide monster of a tire. We have, uh, we have about 
66 inches to the bottom of our door. So we got a long way to go up to get in. We have exactly a Marianne height. <laughs> I, when I stand here, I, as you can see, I'm holding the camera right now at my eye height. I can't even see into the unit. So, um, yeah. <laughs> we do definitely need a platform. <laughs> I'll get our exercise though going in and out. <laughs> yeah. So this is the basement storage locker, which is this width all the way up to that compartment we showed you on the inside. Um, it's just a big open area right now, which maybe I'll make a tray that slides in and out, at least for some of it, um, so we don't lose things up in there, but yeah. no, whatever, that's not super important, but something that'll probably get done. I got a little bit of fiberglass repair to do there too. And uh, over on this side, we have uh, propane tanks in here. We got dual 20 pounders, which is nice. And the Duchess, we had a built-in tank which was actually expired. And um, you're always wondering, are you gonna be able to get a fill that's expired? Doesn't seem to be a problem in the US. In Canada though, I know they look at it a lot more, but this we don't need to worry. If the tank expires out, we just buy another one. Um, very simple. I needed to turn on the propane this morning to run the furnace and I had to get a milk crate to stand on to do it. So <laughs> definitely we need a ladder. And um, we have back here, this is the uh, current battery compartment that I was talking about on the inside. So we only have two group 24s in there right now, which um, the lithium 100 amp hours I have are a little smaller than a group 24. They're uh, a mini they're called. So I think I can fit, if I can fit two of them in this area here, going the, like length, lengthwise one, one behind the other, then I can fit two more over here, probably move this little distribution box, but I should be able to get all four batteries in there. Um, might be a good idea to add a little bit of heat in there, maybe a heating pad underneath because they're not self-heated batteries, but um, we're not really gonna be alone in that cold of weather, I don't think, but it'd probably be good to have something we could turn on just in case we had to. And then uh, up here, there's a, some stuff in here right now, but that's a pretty big box and I may use that for the inverter. That way I can just run the battery power up to there. Maybe mount the inverter in the ceiling of that. I might need to ventilate with some fans or something, uh, but that might be a good spot for the inverter. Yet to determine uh, what's up with that. And uh, we have an outside plug here and uh, outside light and an awning way up there. I don't know. I don't know if we can reach that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how good it'll be being that high. I'm not sure. But um, it's there. And uh, and then this is just the control for the electric jacks. And that's about it on the outside. Yeah, we do have a lot of um, sun damage done to our stickers. They're not peeling yet. Um, but they are all really quite weather beaten and cracked. So they're going to all come off and I'm going to be doing some custom decals that are going to go on there. Not sure what they're going to look like yet, but somehow they'll tie in the, uh, the yellow of the truck. If you're wondering why the back end looks kind of funny right now, we had to take the outer duals off these, uh, these 24 inch wheels that are on this thing make it 102 inches wide on the back, which is way too wide to drive it between the swing up brackets, even though they are duly swing up brackets. They clear the fender, but with the outer wheels on, they stick out even farther. So um, these tires and wheels are gonna go, they don't really work for us. Uh, we're gonna go, they look really cool and everything, but um, they don't, these tires are regular truck tires on 24 inch wheels. You don't get much load capacity where maxed out on the front tires even without a camper on the truck so we need something with a higher load rating so um i've been looking into super singles um i'm gonna go with something like a 41 inch goodyear tire so they'll be these are 37 so they'll be a little taller we'll have singles all around on different wheels 20 inch wheels so that's going to give us way higher load capacity and better capability off-road in the sand and stuff um, will be easier to air down. We only have four tires to air down, so that should work better there. 
Um, the truck's a 2007 Chevy Kodiak 4x4 with a Duramax diesel. Um, pretty good diesel. Pre-def, so you don't have as much emission stuff to deal with. So a little bit of a simpler diesel. Not as simple as the Duchess, but um, pretty good. And um, this truck, we love the cab size. It's uh, It's got a huge rear uh, area in the cab. We're going to take the back seat out and um, be able to store more stuff in there because we don't have a whole lot of storage space with the truck camper. So we'll get the back seat out of there and uh, figure out, actually we need to figure out what all we're going to bring with us and put in there and make it all work. And this truck actually already has a winch on it. So when we do all the wrong things, <laughs> hopefully we can get out. Maybe we'll have the winch out in a video somewhere. Kind of hope not, but I wouldn't be surprised. So that was the chewer, the pre-chewer of um, our truck camper. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned uh, moving forward as we're going to be bringing you all kinds of renovation videos as we go along from demo right to we hit the road. So if you haven't already, please uh, give us a subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you uh, enjoyed this, please give us a like. And if you have any suggestions or comments, leave a comment. Absolutely. We love to hear from you. Take care. Bye. Bye.